Let me just read in the book of Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 5, it says, But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if, if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Saul and his men, when, when I was reading that, uh, who among you here, every time you read the Bible, uh, it's like you're putting yourself into that situation as well. May ganun ba kayo? Yung pag nagbabasa ka ng Bible, feeling mo, ikaw yung, uh, ako yung kasama ni Saul. Yung mga ganun, di ba? Ah, gusto ko yung, ano kayo yung feeling ko? Ako si Ananias. Di ba? Like, like, Ako kaya yung kabayo? Hindi, hindi pwede yun, di ba? Wala kang pakikamdam doon. So, hindi pwede. O ako yung chariot, may hirap naman yun. So, while I was reading that, you know, medyo, medyo isa sa mga napansin ko, masyadong seryoso tong mga to. Di ba? Sobra to, seryoso. May kinala ba kayong taong seryoso? Yung grabe. Ibang klase kasi, so sobrang kaseryosohan itong mga to, isang grupo na mga katropa ni Saul, humingi pa ng letter sa kinauukulan para lang habulin at i-persecute yung mga Christians. Na sino sa inyo dito, hindi nyo na kailangan ng permit para mag-persecute? Nasaan kamay? Sino dito kayo yung nagpe-persecute dati? Meron ba kayong ganung story? Yung kayo yung ayaw na ayaw sa Kristiyano, kayo yung burn, burn again, burn again ka pa, di ba? Wala yan. Tapos maya-maya, nandito ka na, nag-worship ka na. <laughs> so, naku, kinain ko lahat ng mga sinabi. May mga ganun ba kayong experience? Isa lang yung nakita ko talaga, these people were lost. Hindi nila alam talaga yung ginagawa nila. They were serious, sincere, but they were lost. Kung alam lang nila kung anong ginagawa nila, maintindihan nila na sayang yung mga oras, yung mga araw, na ginugol nila to run after those believers. The Bible says they called it the way. Wala pang Christians noon. Ang tawag pa sa mga uh, followers ni Lord, the way. Kapag ikaw, hindi mo alam ang ginagawa mo, kailangan mo ng tulong, tama ba? You need someone's intervention. Someone should intrude in your situation and do something to help you. Now, who among you here believe that we need God's intervention in our life? Pwede mo ba sabihin sa katabi mo, hindi mo kaya mag-isa ang buhay mo? Maliligaw ka, sabi mo. Lalo na kung susunod ka sa akin. Okay, tama, maliligaw. So that is my question to you today. What is your situation that you want God to intervene? How's your marriage? Kumusta ba yung relasyon mo sa asawa mo? Kumusta ba yung trabaho mo? Kumusta ba yung negosyo mo? Kumusta yung relationship mo? Kumusta ka ba? Now, yung iba siguro, tatanungin ako, ah, sasagutin ako, okay naman ako, pastor. Sino sa inyo dito, kapag kinumusta ka, ang lagi mong sagot, okay ka naman. Pero ang totoo, hindi, oh, hindi ka okay. May ganun ba kayo? Lalo na mga lalaki? Mga lalaki, tanongin mo, kumusta ka, okay ka ba? Okay naman. Pero ang dami ng problema, tama ba? Yung mga babae, sabihin mo lang, okay na, tino, kumusta ka ba? Hindi okay naman ang sagot. Alam mo kung anong sagot? Tatlong oras na usapan. Diba yung mga babae? <laughs> kumusta ka? Taka, upo tayo. Tatlong oras na, hindi pa tapos yun. Okay, ganun yung mga babae. But okay ka ba? Kumusta ka ba? Now, we need, or we badly need God's intervention. Two things that I want to share. You know why? Because in our Christian life, in our walk with God, sa personal na buhay natin, especially in our relationship with the Lord, 
we can hear the voice of God without knowing Him. The men were speechless. They had heard the voice, but they had not seen anyone. They heard the very voice of God, but they were not able to recognize who God is. Now, could it be that we can come to church every Sunday? We can read the Bible every day. We worship the Lord, and yet we don't know Him. It's not enough for us to go to church every Sunday or worship the Lord every Sunday. We need to allow God, we need to ask God for His intervention in our lives so that we will know Him better. We want to taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Second is, we cannot live by what our eyes see. That is why we need God's intervention. In Acts 9.8, it says, Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. He saw nothing. Paul's eyes were opened, but he saw nothing. In other words, you cannot live with only using your natural eyes. You will only get discouraged if the only thing you see is what is around you in the natural. Kapag na-appreciate mo lang yung mga bagay na nakikita mo in the natural, later on, you're going to be discouraged, right? Tama ba? Kung titignan mo lang yung bahay mo ngayon, you're going to be discouraged, right? Kung titignan mo lang yung situation mo ngayon, yung kotse mo, kung titignan mo lang yung salary mo ngayon, you're going to be discouraged. Tama. But if you will ask the Lord to give you this eyes of faith to go beyond what the natural eyes can see, sino sa inyo, you're going to be more excited about your life. May mas maganda pang nakahanda para sa iyo. Tama ba? Hindi ka lang dyan para sa sweldo na yan. Yang situation na yan, hindi pang habang buhay yan. Tama. If you are a Christian, if you follow Jesus, and you never use your spiritual eyes or the eyes of faith, you're going to be wandering around, tossed about by every circumstance of life. Kung ano lang yung nakita mo, kung ano lang yung meron ka. You know, we will not understand the story of Saul unless we study the story of Philip and Ananias. Why? Because in the story of Saul, if you're going to read chapter 9, you will not understand chapter 9 unless you read chapter 8. Because prior to the chapter 9, there's the story of Philip that God used. And then on the latter part of chapter 9 was the story of Ananias. So you sandwich that, you will be able to understand why God intervened. One reason, salvation. Sabihin nga natin, salvation. So the Lord is going to intrude, the Lord is going to intervene in our lives, in our situation, not because the Lord wants to save us from our situation, but the Lord wants to save our lives and the lives of other people. There was this intervention coming from the Lord to the life of Philip because the Lord wanted to save the Ethiopian, right? The Ethiopian eunuch. And there was this intervention of the Holy of, of God, Jesus Himself, on the road to Damascus to Saul because the Lord wanted to what? To save Saul. Right? Now, could you imagine this? Si Lord mismo yung nag-share ng gospel kay Saul. Now, sino sa inyo dito gusto niyong si Lord na yung mag-save ng kaibigan niyo? Di ba? Parang ginawa mo ng lahat, si Lord na lang to. May ganun, no? Lord, ikaw na nga kaya, magpakita ka na sa kanya, di ba? <laughs> Pakita, may mga ganun ba kayo? May mga kilala ba kayong ganun? Na, ang hirap eh, ang hirap ma-save na. Ah, meron ba ikaw? Si Lord na talaga eh, di ba? Lord, uh, bigyan mo nga ng panaginip yan, di ba? O kaya habang naglalakad yan, di ba? Bulagin mo, <laughs> ganun, baka. It was the Lord Himself, Jesus Himself, intervened in that situation sa buhay ni Saul for Saul to be saved. And then here comes Ananias 
There was this inter intervention again coming from the Lord. Ananias was just doing his uh, regular routine as a disciple. And then all of a sudden, G uh, uh, the, uh, the Holy Spirit appeared. Why? Because God wanted Ananias to share the gospel so that the Gentile nation will be saved. So it's all about salvation. So God's intervention always leads to salvation. And let me just read in Acts chapter 9, verses 15 to 17. It says, But the Lord said to him, Go. It was the Lord who was talking to Ananias. And it says, But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house. Now before we talk about that chapter, oh, before we talk about that verse, verses 15 to 17, we all know what had happened to Ananias. Again, Ananias was doing his regular routine as a disciple. And then all of a sudden, here comes the Lord appeared to him by telling him, there was this man, there was this notorious man by the name of Saul that I want you to go and then share the gospel to him. Now, alam niyo naman yung nangyari, tama? Anong sabi ni Ananias? Paano ko lalapitan yun? Inutorious yun, di ba? May kilala, sino sa inyo dito, gust, may kilala kayong tao na ayaw yung sharean kasi siguradong baka, baka patayin ka, hindi naman baka patayin ka, kundi parang sinabi sa inyo ni Lord, o oh, share naman yung good news sa boss mo, di ba? Eh, alam mo naman yung boss mo, ayaw na ayaw sa mga Christian. Tapos sabi ni Lord, hindi, share mo. Eh, pag pag sinare ko yan, Lord, anong mangyayari? Mawawala na ako ng trabaho, tama ba? Alam mo ba yung mga ganon? Yung sobrang takot talaga si Ananias. Eh, lahat, ginawa niya na. Lahat ng dahilan, sinabi niya na kay Lord. Pero mayroong isang bagay na nagbago ng isip ni Ananias. Ano yun? When the Lord said, For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. Sabi ni Ananias, ah, ganun ba Lord? Gin na. Diba? Go na. Magsasuffer pala eh. Mahihirapan pala eh. So, share ko na. At least quits kami. Diba? Bawi kami. Ang <laughs> ganun yun. With my sanctified imagination. So, okay lang. But you know, regardless of what had happened to Ananias, I like what he did. You know why? Because despite the fear, Despite the threat or what, what is going to happen to him concerning Saul, the one persecuting Christian and disciples, he obeyed the Lord. Now, who among you, you want to be like Ananias? Na minsan takot tayo, tama ba? Minsan para, parang ayaw nating sumunod. But at the end of the day, we still obey the Lord. Amen. May ganun ba kayo? Lord, ayoko na mag-church. Eh, Lord, ayoko nang pagkagising ko sa umaga kanina. Ang sarap ng ano eh. Ang lamig eh, di ba? Sarap pa matulog. Ang aga ko pupunta dito, ayoko na muna mag-church, Lord. Sabi ni Lord, hindi pwede, ikaw yung pastor. Di ba? O nga pala, okay. So I obey. <laughs> Tama ba? So regardless of those circumstances in our lives, we still obey the Lord. And His obedience, the obedience of Ananias, when He allowed the Lord to intrude, when He allowed the Lord to intervene in His daily routine as a disciple, His obedience was instrumental to the salvation of Gentile nations. Now imagine the impact of man's obedience. Think about that. And not only that, I said, what if one of the pastors in victory by the name of Pastor Don Perez did not obey the Lord, did not go to our school, and then shared the gospel to me? Of course, I will not become a pastor in the church. Wala siguro ko ngayon sa kapan ninyo na nagpipreach, tama ba? What if the person who shared to you, who brought you here, did not obey the Lord. Thank God they took the first step. Think about this. 
it will only take your first step to experience reconciliation in your family. It will take you your first step to restore that kind of relationship. It is always just one step away. Will you take the first step? Will you say, Lord, I want you to intervene in my situation right now. And Lord, I want to take my first step and obey you and see miracles, breakthrough, blessings, answers to our prayers, Lord, starting today. Before I end, I want to quote these words from St. Augustine. Without God, we cannot. Without us, God will not. <laughs>